What's up guys? So we are back for another video breakdown of the stages from the tactical games. This one is stage three. It's called Ropes and Throws. And this was probably my second favorite because I love rope climbs. And these sandbag throws are starting to grow on me. And I'm using a new software. I'm using OBS Studio instead of Loom, which I used for my last video. So if anyone knows anything about OBS Studio, please let me know because I really liked that I could point things out or draw things with Loom, and I don't know if I can do that with OBS Studio, but I do like that I'm in a fixed position. So if anyone knows anything about it, let me know if I can draw stuff because I liked that. So like I said, this is the breakdown of stage three. I'm not gonna post the entire thing like I said in my last video because it just gets boring and I'm just gonna break it down. The whole purpose of these videos are, they're just informational so that you can kind of see what to expect. If you do the tactical games, what movements might be involved. Uh, and hopefully I can give you guys some tips and tricks on how to perform them, how to transition from the fitness portion to the firing line and how to perform at the firing line as well. So we're gonna go ahead and jump into this and I hope you guys enjoy it. So here we go. All right, so this first part, we run down Grab our sandbag is 30 go. pounds for women's tactical, and you have to toss it up and over you and over this bar. My sandbag started falling apart on me, <laughs> and so they kept trying to fix it the whole time, and it just kept falling apart, but it's fine. So I'm going to go ahead and pause it right here. A lot of people don't know how to do this movement and it's very intimidating whenever you are just getting started with it. Some people got to this event and they had never even practiced it before. So tips on this. This is a lighter sandbag for me. I was practicing and training with a 40 pound and like I said this is a 30 pound and that bar is a little bit lower than the ones that I was practicing with. So I was used to this movement, but because of those reasons, the short bar and the lighter sandbag, I could only dip once and then toss it straight over. If the bar is higher and you maybe have a heavier sandbag, you might have to do an extra swing, like a kettlebell swing to get some momentum. And then you throw it as it's coming up, you release it right at the top of that arc and then watch it go over. And you want to watch it go over because if it happens to hit the bar, it's going to fall on your head. So you want to make sure you watch it go over and get the heck out of the way. So that's my tip on that. But after we did the sandbag throws, you had to go into a rope climb. There I'm going to talk baby. about these Come rope on. climbs because they're always involved. But one, I was not happy about my rope climbs because normally I feel pretty solid in them. But this time my feet were not gripping the way that I'm used to them doing that and I don't know why in training leading up to this event and in this event I could not get my feet to grip to save my life and in a rope climb what you want to do is that initial jump up to the rope to grab it you tuck your knees as high as you can and you almost lean your body back and then get a good grip I can't even explain to you how to get the grip on the rope I just automatically do it I'd have to make a video but you get a good tight grip and then you push yourself up with your feet to get up the rope. A lot of people think you climb with your arms, you use your legs. But this time I was having a hard time doing that. I was trying to do it in three poles and I was only getting it in like four. So I was a little frustrated, but those are things for me to practice. They always throw a rope climb in there and they always throw like a wall climb. And some people can't do these things. So hopefully this helps you be prepared to practice those before you do a tactical game because you might need it. They also do not put out the workouts until the night before. <laughs> we didn't get the workouts until the night before. So you wanna be prepared for anything, honestly. Nice so then we steady. went back nice into five steady. throws. So we did five throws, rope climb, now doing five more throws. And my judge already told them that it was falling apart. And so, yeah, they duct taped it. And I was cussing at the sandbag the whole time. There I have quite the potty mouth whenever I'm working Knock out or training. And go. at the end, they good, apologized good. to me <laughs> for the sandbag. And I was like, I mean, don't go. worry about it. It is what it is. Come I almost on, forgot my, to get focused. my magazines. They're, they were staged at the, the front Everything of the stage. The and you had to go and grab them after you were done with your fitness portion. And let me pause it again. 
This middle portion where I'm walking, trotting to the firing line is a very important spot. And a lot of people don't understand that. And they bolt down to the firing line. The issue with that is that you're already out of breath from your fitness portion. And now you have to be accurate. And the whole point of the tactical games is accuracy. That is where you get your points. You can fitness all day long, but if you are not accurate, you're not going to do as well as you are hoping that you're going to. So I try to take advantage of that space in between the fitness portion and the firing line. And I calm myself down. I try to lower my heart rate and call my breath before I get to the rifle portion. So there's that. So we get down there, start with the rifle portion first. And we had to go into the 45 degree angle ports. And then each round we alternated sides. But I start in this frog position. As you can see, my knees go out to the side. I call it the frog position. That is the most stable position for me. If you have flexible hips, do it. It's the best. You can just lean into the barricade, jam your rifle in, and you're golden. But I found out that the port was a little too high, so I had to adjust and go up onto my knees, which I'm not as stable in, but it's still pretty stable. So tips on this, really drive your rifle into the barricade, make sure it's in that pocket, and then bring your thumb to the opposite side. This is what I do. I'm not saying everyone should do it. This is what works for me. Bring your thumb over to the other side and slowly start to pull the trigger. What's going to be happening is that you're going to be breathing heavy and your dot is going to be kind of going like this. And so you want to slowly pull that trigger and right whenever it's about, <laughs> keep doing that, right whenever it's about to go into the target, that's when you pull the trigger and you don't want to slap it. You just want to pull it straight back. And all the while you're breathing through your nose because you're trying to slow down your heart rate and you stick your tongue to the roof of your mouth. That helps you stabilize and it helps you make sure that you're breathing through your nose. But breathing through your nose just helps you calm down a little bit more. There are other scientific facts about it that I'm not going to explain because I don't exactly know all of them, but my PT explained it to me and it helps me so much. So I suggest trying it or looking it up to see why it's beneficial. So that's how I shoot my rifle portion. So then after this, I'm going to speed her on up a little bit. I don't even know how far out those rifle targets were, to be honest. 200 yards, maybe. The first day of shooting, I did not do well at all. But my second day, I pulled it together. In your pistol portion, you are just standing, freestanding. And I get a good solid base and I just punch the gun straight out. And as I'm doing that, I'm getting a good grip on my gun. A lot of times what happens is if you're a right-handed shooter, for example, and you're tired, this wrist kind of starts to go a little lazy and you start pushing it to the side. And especially if you're slapping your trigger. So you want to make sure you get a really good, nice, tight grip to where you have a stable wrist and punch that gun out and slowly pull the trigger straight back and nice and steady right when you're on target. Hopefully that helps. Same thing, stick your tongue to the roof of your mouth and breathe through your nose and just calm your breath down. So then after that, they're trying to fix my sandbag right there. But after that, after you're done with the firing portion, you're done. You have to say clear. You see my me put my hands up right there, and that just shows your judge. You're clear. You're safe. You're good to move on. You start the process all over again. So, like I said, I'm not going to bore you with the entire stage, but that's about it. Like I said, the reason I like to make these videos is that so you are prepared for whatever they might throw your way. Again, they don't put out the workouts until late the night before, <laughs> typically, and you just want to be ready for anything. So I hope this really helps you. And if you have any questions, please feel free to comment me, comment me, message me on Instagram or comment down below. And I'll try to get you the best information that I possibly can. But hopefully some of this helped you today. So I will see you all on my next one. And thanks for watching.